A woman arrested on suspicion of using pillows to suffocate her three daughters to death. The top court clears a journalist's conviction over checking vehicle registration records for making a documentary. And Russia says its forces have thwarted a major Ukrainian offensive in Donetsk. Good evening and thanks for joining us. A woman was suspected to have used pillows to suffocate three of her own daughters to death in Shamshui Po. The 29-year-old suspect of Indian descent was arrested by the police on suspicion of murder. Timothy Lee has our top story. A case of suspected familicide occurred inside a 200-square-foot apartment on 115 Quailin Street in densely populated Shamshui Po today. <laughs> Several parts of the area were cordoned off as authorities searched the area. Local residents were questioned. Police said they received a report from an Indian woman claiming that her three daughters, aged between two and five, were attacked by the father with a knife and fell unconscious. Armed officers were deployed to the scene and found the apartment's bedroom locked. They broke in to find three girls lying unconscious on the bed. Some local residents told TVB News what they witnessed. I just come down like around uh, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock come down and I see so many police around there and suddenly I see the police bring down a baby to put in the ambulance but they don't have any injury but breathless so they immediately put in the ambulance and then he said go, go, go. They were then taken to the Caritas Medical Center, but later pronounced dead after resuscitation efforts failed. The police said a preliminary investigation shows that the three victims had no visible injuries and no weapons or drugs were found at the crime scene. Authorities later found traces of blood on several pillows on the bed, as well as on the noses and lips of the victims. They believe the victim's 29-year-old mother smothered them to death. They noted that the suspect does not have a history of mental illness. We have found no evidence suggesting the arrested person has any mental illness, record or history. Okay? Um, the mother lived, was living in this um, flat, um, subdivided flat in this building uh, with her three daughters. Um, nothing suggests that they were in any bad relationship at all. The police said the victim's mother appeared calm after the incident. Their investigation revealed that she suffered from emotional problems after giving birth two years ago and received psychiatric help. The suspect's Pakistani husband arrived at the crime scene to assist with the investigation, with authorities saying that the couple had been separated for some time. The sister of the suspect's husband rushed to the Caritas Medical Center to better understand the situation. It is one year they are separated from each other. My brother filed for custody. He made it for the court. Members of the Social Welfare Department also visited the building of the crime scene to provide support for affected residents. The police said they will continue their investigation at the Shamshepo crime scene in the building behind me. Several local residents said they heard sounds of struggle coming from where the murders allegedly took place. Timothy Lee, TVB News. A 39-year-old man arrested in connection with last Friday's stabbing deaths of two women at Plaza Hollywood appeared in court today. The defendant, Sito Singh Kwong, faces two counts of murder. He was taken to Kuntao Magistrate's Court in a police van. While in the courtroom, the defendant clenched his fists and breathed deeply. The case was adjourned until the 19th of this month. Meanwhile, two psychiatric reports were requested to determine if the defendant is mentally capable of putting in a plea. The defendant did not apply for bail and was remanded in Sulam Psychiatric Center. The Court of Final Appeal has cleared journalist Bao Choi's conviction over checking vehicle registration records for a documentary about the 2019 Yunlong mob attacks. After the top court's ruling, Choi said her legal victory underscores that press freedom in Hong Kong is protected by the Constitution. But she added the 30-month-long legal battle has already hamstrung some journalistic work. 
Two years ago, former RTHK freelance producer Bao Choi was found guilty of making false statements to obtain vehicle ownership records. That was for a documentary she co-produced about the 2019 Yunlong mob attacks during the city's political unrest. She was fined $6,000. In a unanimous judgment, five top court judges ruled in favor of the journalist's appeal. In the written verdict, they affirmed it's necessary for the transport commissioner to ask a person's reason to obtain vehicle details. That includes investigative journalistic purposes. Yet the judgment said lower court rulings did substantial and grave injustice to Choi by inferring she knowingly made false statements. While rights such as the freedom of speech and the press were not absolute, there is no reason to exclude genuine journalistic purposes from the option listed on matters related to traffic and transport, the verdict wrote. The judgment also said given the volume of certificates issued to media outlets, journalists in choice position could well be honestly mistaken in thinking journalistic purposes could be included in the option relating to traffic and transport matters. After her legal victory, Bao has this to say. I'm very happy that we have a very crystal clear ruling this morning. Over the past few years, a lot of us are having a very challenging and also difficult time when we conduct serious journalism. But still, not all, but a lot of us still um, pursue for our highest value of the journalistic principles. It also states um, the importance of the constitutionally protected freedom of the press and of the speech. And I think that is the biggest significance of today's ruling. Hong Kong is a democracy. Chief Secretary for Administration Eric Chan said the government respects the rule of law and will review relevant procedures. The Hong Kong Journalists Association welcomed the ruling, but urged the government to respect journalists' work to ensure the public's right to know and press freedom are protected. The Hong Kong News Executives Association meanwhile called for clearer guidelines from authorities on accessing public databases to facilitate journalists' work. Jacqueline, TVB News. The fallout form a near-naval collision in the Taiwan Strait continues, with both sides blaming each other. A Chinese warship got within 150 meters of a U.S. destroyer in the sensitive waterway. David Garrett reports. While the defense leaders of both the United States and China were shaking hands and making speeches in Singapore, their naval ships nearly had a major collision in the Taiwan Strait. The Canadian frigate, the Montreal, working alongside the U.S. Navy destroyer named the Chung Hoon, filmed this. The Chinese warship approaches from the left. Slowly it moves to within the vicinity of the U.S. vessel and cuts across the destroyer. The U.S. said it got within 150 yards or 137 meters. They say the Chinese ship violated the maritime rules of the road. The U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet ship and the Montreal were conducting a joint operation in the politically sensitive area. Defence Minister Li Sheng Fu, speaking only hours after the incident in Singapore, made a point of mentioning it in his keynote speech. He said, in addition to such rules, the best way to avoid it is for all countries, especially their military aircraft and warships, to refrain from wandering around other countries' territorial waters and airspace. They should keep their own personnel, warships and aircraft in order. In Beijing, the foreign ministry also spoke on the matter earlier. Official spokesman Wang Wenbin said... The actions were necessary steps in response to provocations. They are completely justified, lawful, safe and professional. China is firmly against the relevant country stirring up troubles in the Taiwan Strait. The U.S. Navy also released still images and video of the incident. They've called it an unsafe interaction. This comes at a time when China-U.S. relations are already at a low ebb after several military incidents and disagreements. Washington also distributed footage from the bow of the destroyer, showing the proximity of the other boat clearly. A radio message can be heard warning against attempts to limit navigation. Maneuvering close to each other, 150 yards uh, is, is very scary. Uh, and you, you don't ever want to be that close to another vessel because too many things can go wrong and you can actually have a collision. David Garrett, TBB News. Russia said today its forces had thwarted a major Ukrainian offensive at five points along the front in the Ukrainian region of Donetsk and killed hundreds of troops. Ukraine accused Moscow of spreading lies as precise details about Kyiv's long-awaited counteroffensive remain closely guarded. Daniel Rao tells us more. The Russian Defense Ministry said Ukraine had attacked on Sunday morning with six mechanized and two tank battalions in southern Donetsk. The ministry released video of what it said showed several Ukrainian armored vehicles in a field blowing up after being hit. 
It added Russian forces killed 250 Ukrainian troops as well as destroying 16 tanks, three infantry fighting vehicles and 21 armored combat vehicles. Ukraine's Center for Strategic Communications did not address the statement directly, but said Russia would seek to spread lies. The comments come with Ukraine expected to soon launch a long-anticipated counteroffensive. The commander of Ukraine's ground forces, Oleksandr Sirsky, said today that Ukrainian forces continued moving forward near the long-contested city of Bakhmut in northern Donetsk. Sirsky did not mention the counteroffensive. The daily report from Ukraine's general staff said only that there were 29 combat clashes in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions of eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky told the Wall Street Journal in an interview published on Saturday that he was ready to launch the counteroffensive. Still ahead? The financial secretary says the government has no intention of adjusting property market cooling measures. Hall Park Mansion will reopen to the public on Friday. And Turkey sends troops to Kosovo to join the K-4 peacekeeping force. Welcome back. Secretary for Finance Paul Chan said tourism and local consumption are still the main drivers for Hong Kong's economic growth in the third quarter. Chan also stressed that authorities have no intention of adjusting the so-called spicy measures, a series of stamp duties that are currently implemented on the property market. Momo Sangai reports. Speaking at a electrical meeting today, Financial Secretary Paul Chan said Hong Kong's economy has improved notably this year posting 2.7% growth in the first three months, ending four consecutive quarters of decline. Chan also expressed optimism about the local economy. As for our forecast, uh, it remains at 3.5 to 5.5%. Unless there are drastic changes in the external environment, we should be able to achieve the higher side of this uh, GDP forecast. The Secretary added local consumption and tourism will continue to be the main economic growth drivers in the third quarter. Meanwhile, real estate and construction sector lawmaker Louis Long proposed that Chen could gradually lift the spicy measures, a series of stamp duties authorities have implemented on the property market. Long justified his proposal with two points, that short-term investment in the city's property market is low and there are a small number of transactions by non-local house buyers. Whether in demand or supply, this market indicator also tells us that strict measures can be rolled back. The financial secretary, well, Mr. Louis Long, what is your question? I will be quick. The FS actually welcomes IMF for speaking very highly of Hong Kong. Will the FS consider the recommendation of the IMF to roll back all these measures? While the Secretary acknowledged the spicy measures have affected property market speculation since their introduction, he said the government is not intending to adjust such policies. He stressed the purpose of housing measures is to prioritize local people buying properties to live in and not for flipping. Mimos Nai, TVB News. Hall Park Mansion will reopen to the public on Friday. Applications to reserve free guided tours open at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Bookings should be made on the website of the Development Bureau's Antiquities and Monuments Office. Tours will be available from Friday through Sunday and on most public holidays. So far, only Cantonese tours are offer offered. Located in Tai Hang, the tiger-themed historical mansion was built in 1936 by renowned billionaire peddler of Tiger Balm, Al Poon Hall, and his family. The three-story Chinese Renaissance-style residence was later revitalized into the Hall Park Music Farm, hosting various art-related events. The mansion was also used as a film set for a 2023 Hong Kong movie, A Guilty Conscience. Hundreds of thousands of protesters marched through Warsaw on Sunday for the 34th anniversary of Poland's first post-war democratic election. 
The country's liberal opposition billed the demonstration as a test of visibility to end nearly eight years of nationalist rule later this year. Opinion polls show an election due after the summer will be closely fought. Russia's war in neighboring Ukraine has given a boost to the ruling law and justice government, which has emerged as a leading voice against the Kremlin and Europe. The ruling party has been accused of eroding the rule of law, turning state media into a government mouthpiece, and endorsing homophobia. Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki's government denies subverting any democratic norms. He said the party's aim is to protect traditional Christian values and to make the economy more fair. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg met in Istanbul on Sunday. NATO is hoping Turkey can give the green light to Sweden's wish to join the military alliance. Turkey has been holding out on Sweden's NATO membership, blaming Stockholm of harboring militant groups deemed by Ankara as terrorists. Sudenberg, though, said he is confident an agreement can be reached in time for next month's alliance summit in Lithuania. He said officials from Turkey, Finland and Sweden will meet later this month. Turkey, meanwhile, has deployed troops to Kosovo in response to a NATO request to join its K-4 peacekeeping force. Its defense ministry called for restraint and constructive dialogue in Kosovo, where a political crisis has turned violent after ethnic Albanian mayors took office in Serb-majority areas. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.